When we're talking about gases and properties of gases and behavior of gases, there's two other terms that are very important. And they talk, they describe the movement of gases. And that's effusion and diffusion. So effusion is the escape of gas molecules through a tiny hole. So if we think about a balloon, if you blow up a, a party balloon, you'll notice that after a few days, the balloon's gotten kind of flat. That's because there's very tiny holes in the, in the balloon material where the gas molecules have slowly escaped from. And so that's sort of illustrated in this case here. We have sort of a chamber with a tiny hole. Effusion is the process of those gas molecules coming uh, slowly down through that pinhole. Now, that process is important and implicated in, in uh, a number of scenarios, but one, uh, so, so we're able to describe that process using a law, we have many gas laws, but this one is Graham's law of effusion. And this, we're able to relate the rate of effusion for gas molecules to the molar mass of the gas itself. So the rate of effusion, if we have two different, if we have two different gases, then the rate of the effusion of uh, the first gas relative to the rate of the uh, of effusion of the second gas is related to the ratio of their molar masses. So R1 uh, over R2 is equal to the square root of the molar mass of gas two over the molar mass of gas one. So how does that work? What does that look like? Well, let's say that we had two balloons here, one that's R, uh, helium and the other one is argon. Well, what we would notice, say we filled them both up to the same amount to begin with, we would notice that the helium balloon goes flat much faster than the argon balloon. And so that's because the rate of effusion for helium, because its molar mass is smaller than the molar mass for argon, then the rate of effusion is going to be larger for helium than it is for argon. And we can directly, we can directly compare those two rates using this equation. So let's just do, uh, let's actually just go ahead and do this problem here. So how much faster is the rate of effusion of helium from a balloon than the rate of effusion of argon from an identical balloon? Well, we can simply substitute uh, in their molar masses. And what we'll find is that the rate of helium relative to the rate of uh, argon, that basically the rate of helium effusion is 3.16 times the rate of argon effusion from the balloon. And this is important uh, for a number of cases. And if you wanted a balloon to last longer, what gas would you put in it? But it's also implicated in a number of other processes. And there's the other, uh, the other process, diffusion. And this is the spread of a substance throughout a space. So if I open up a bottle of uh, uh, some very smelly chemical at the far end of a room, Diffusion is the process of that, of, the, of that gas spreading through the room until it finally reaches your nose and you can smell it and how fast that process occurs. Now, the rate of diffusion or the spreading out of gas molecules is much, much less than the average speed of those gas molecules. And you may wonder why, wouldn't, wouldn't the rate of diffusion simply be equal to the rate, the average speed of those gas molecules? Uh, so shouldn't, uh, shouldn't the gas just go from here to there? Well, the reason that this rate of diffusion is so much less than the average speed is because of collisions. So a gas molecule doesn't vary, it doesn't travel in a straight line. Instead, if we start out here, it will bounce uh, many, 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 many times before it finally reaches the final destination. So even though gas molecules in, uh, in a gas mixture behave as though they are entirely isolated, as they move, they do hit each other every once in a while, or they hit the wall, 
and their motion is random as described by the kinetic molecular theory. And so they travel in and bump into other gas molecules or container walls constantly. And as a result of that, then the overall rate of diffusion, the time it takes to get from one point to another point in a linear straight line is much less than the uh, time depicted by just taking the average uh, molecular speed. And we can describe uh, the, how far a molecule travels before it, in, before it count, encounters another molecule and does a collision as the mean free path. And that mean free path we can describe, um, we can describe the mean free path by, uh, with equations that are a little bit more complicated and relate them to the pressure or the amount of the gas that's present. You can imagine if the pressure is higher, the mean free path would be smaller, or if the number of gas molecules is significantly higher, well, it's much more likely than much more likely to do a collision over a much shorter distance. But we won't go through those calculations. Essentially, what we can just take from this is that even though the rate of diffusion is much less than the average um, molecular speed, the rate of diffusion is directly proportional to the root mean square speed for, uh, for a sample of gas. So even with all these collisions, if a, if, a, if a molecule is moving faster than another molecule, then its rate of diffusion will be higher. Let's take a specific example of this. So when two gases diffuse through cotton plugs on the ends, and uh, then they're going to travel down that tube. Eventually, they will meet. And when those two gases meet, they will react to form a white solid, which will be shown as a white ring. So we've got HCl on one side, gas, and ammonia on the other side. At which location will they meet, at A, B, or C? Well, we can look at these and, and we could do some calculations. And I think if we were really careful, we would probably say, oh, it probably doesn't actually lie exactly at A, B, or C. But uh, this is generally speaking, um, you know, do, do they meet exactly in the middle or do they meet more towards one side or the other? Well, here we can relate this to their rate of diffusion traveling down that tube to their molecular speed, to the root mean square speed. And we know that the root mean square speed is inversely proportional to the molar mass. So the higher the molar mass, the slower the root mean square speed and thus the slower the rate of diffusion. So if I look at both of these, HCl has a molar mass of about 36 grams per mole. Ammonia has a molar mass of about 17 grams per mole. So Mol uh, ammonia has the lower molar mass and thus a higher uh, root mean square speed and a higher rate of diffusion. So we would not expect them to meet exactly in the middle. We would not expect them to meet at point C closer towards ammonia. Since ammonia should have a higher rate of diffusion, we would expect them to meet more uh, closer to point A in, the, in this process. And so that's kind of how we use uh, effusion and diffusion for gases.